Getting started with Aspen OLI requires you to build an OLI chemistry model first before you go into Aspen. This will start that process. To start the OLI chemistry model generation, you need to go to Start, All Programs, find the Aspen Tech folder, and we'll be using Aspen Plus 7.1, so find Process Modeling. Then, installed will be a folder called Aspen OLI. And for this example, we'll start with the Chemistry Wizard. Once the splash screen has cleared, we can actually begin to enter our chemistry. The first thing that comes up is the OLI Chemistry Wizard uh, generator, and we need to enter a name. We are limited to eight characters, and there can be no special characters such as dots, dashes, ampersands, or asterisks. So we'll put in a name here, and we'll just call it Demo. And then we'll click the Next button. We're allowed two different thermodynamic frameworks, this traditional aqueous framework or the new mixed solvent electrolyte framework. We'll actually pick that, just to show you that we can. If there were any private databases, we could load them here. Uh, we don't have any for this case, so we'll click the Next button. This brings up a dialog. Every OLI model must contain water, although the flow rate can be zero. We're actually going to add some new species. We're going to click the Add button. And this brings up a slightly different window. And we can either scroll through the list to find the species, or we can just start ta typing the name. Uh, for this particular example, I'm going to want sodium chloride, NaCl. And you can see that it's highlighted. I'll click the Add button. And then I want to add carbon dioxide, CO2. We will add that. I'll add ammonia add that, and I'll add an organic uh, methane, CH4, and we'll add that. When we're done, we can click the close button, and you can see those components have been added. If for some reason I didn't want a particular component, I could highlight it and then click remove. I'm not going to do that for here. We'll click the next button to continue. I can turn on oxidation and reduction chemistry. I don't have anything that's really applicable in this case, but by clicking this checkbox, I could bring up some possible su subsystems. I have a sodium system, nitrogen, chlorine systems, and so forth. I don't actually want any of them, so I'll uncheck the box and click Next. I can now tailor the model to include various phases. By default, every solid phase that is found within our database is included. I could turn them off. For example, if I know I don't have this species, which is the ammonium carbamate solid, I could click that button and that removes it. I also have the ability to add some inerts, which are predefined in the software, uh, and use them here and change the density heat capacity. I will not do so at this time. I could also include an organic liquid by checking that box. I'll do that here as well. I'll click the next button to continue. There is a translation from the Aspen names found from Aspen Plus and the OLI names. For example, our component name for water is alias to H2O and so forth for the other species. If OLI had a component which does not exist in the Aspen libraries, we would have a blank in one of these fields and we'd have to give it an appropriate name. It's not the actual component name in Aspen, rather it's the name that Aspen will recognize taken from the OLI property set. We'll go ahead and click Next. I now can create the Aspen BKP file. Uh, it will have the default name as the model name, in this case demo, although you can give it a new name. And do I want salts to precipitate? This is creating the case salt record in the chemistry paragraph of the model, and we'll show you that in the next section. If I'm ready to go, I will just click Next. I'm now ready to uh, create the Aspen interface file as well as the OLI chemistry name. I'm scrolling down here to see what is uh, included, and you can see it's a brief summary of what's in the, the model. And I'm going ahead and click Generate Files Now. One thing I didn't show earlier is the default folder of where I'm working. You can change this up in the earlier part of the, the software. And I will click F Generate Files Now. It actually will tell you that it's completed and tell you where those files can be found. And I will click OK. 
and then I will click finish to complete this step. Once we're ready to start the Aspen file, uh, start ha Aspen normally. Here I'm running Aspen Plus version 7.1, and I have a blank simulation uh, selected. What I need to do is open the Aspen backup file created by OLI. To do so, I'm just going to select File, then Open, and do need to go locate my file. And I have several files located here. And the file I created was demo.bkp, and I'll go ahead and click, click open for that. And it says, do you want to close the current run? Yes, you can go ahead and say yes and do that. It'll actually shut down and restart. You, we might get a message that says that uh, we're upgrading data banks. We'll go ahead and select keep existing data banks for that. And you'll see that we have what looks to be a blank case. What I want to point out here is that we actually have some data already in the uh, BKP file. I'll go to view and then look at input summary. I will resize this and move it around so you can see that this is information that was already created by OLI. You can see the information the header line uh, and various the Components listed in the chemistry paragraph. I come down here, there's the name chemistry demo, and here are all the K stoics and the K salts that we have uh, created. Now, we took the OLI data and actually formatted it into the Aspen uh, format for this section. We come down to the properties, this is the prop set. You can see it's OLI chemistry, its name is demo, and other values that we automatically populate. So there's data. Now the rule is OLI creates a file called the BKP file. We also create a file called the DBS file. Both files must be in the same folder uh, for this to work. And I'll just go ahead and close this. I will just start here with a simple flash 2 and we'll just go ahead and hook this up like we would normally hook it up. and I will go into the input screen we will just use default units here okay. we'll put in a hundred pound moles an hour of water we will put in a 0.1 pound moles of each of the major components just so we can see what we're doing we'll go ahead and close that. I will specify the block. We'll make it an isothermal block. We'll go ahead and close that. Well, now ready to run. I actually prefer to run the control panel just so I can see what's going on. And I will go ahead and run it. It will actually process the file to make sure it's all correct. You will get a little message here that says you're actually running the OLI software. It'll actually run it. No errors are created. We'll go ahead and close it. And uh, we're done. We can go look at the output stream here, stream 3. And you can see here we've got the calculated outputs. This information is, is actually calculated by OLI and returned back to Aspen. So that's how to create a file. Uh, a few other comments here. If I look into the block under flash options, uh, these are all the same things that you have uh, for uh, Aspen. So there's nothing here that's unique to OLI. Under Properties, we can look at the specifications. This is uh, the only place where you actually see that the base method is OLI and the chemistry ID is demo. That's the one that we created uh, for OLI. And the property set is OLI. So this is how it's specified internally. You can create multiple models using both Aspen models and OLI models and specify the chemistries uh, as necessary. And that's pretty much all there is to uh, getting uh, Aspen Plus and OLI working together. You go ahead and save the file if you want and then exit the software.